वेलकम टू लेक्चर सेवन सो वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग सिमेट्री एलिमेंट्स एंड सिमेट्री ऑपरेशंस सो लेट अस समराइज व्हाट वी हैव लर्न सो फार सो लेट अस लिस्ट डाउन ऑल द सिमेट्री एलिमेंट्स वी हैव लर्न एंड कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग सिमेट्री ऑपरेशंस एंड इफ देर आर एनी स्पेशल केसेस सो लेट्स सी सिमेट्री एलिमेंट्स The first symmetry element is identity, followed by proper axis of rotation, which is uh, symbol by C N. Then inversion center sigma, that's the plane of symmetry, and improper axis of rotation, right? Also called as rotation reflection axis, and the corresponding operations. it will generate so let's say number of operations so e will generate only one operation n order c n axis will generate n operations i will generate only one operation sigma will generate only one operation and sn will generate n operations if n is even we have seen that and it will generate two n operations if n is odd right also there were some special cases that we have seen uh, if cn to the power n this will be equal to e i to the power 2n will also be equal to e similarly sigma to the power 2n would also be equal to e for if you take only s1 it is nothing but sigma we can easily prove it if you take s2 this is nothing but i so you need actually n equal to 3 or higher for s3 to exist so you can work this out yourself so if you take n equal to 1 s1 becomes sigma if you take n equal to 2 s2 becomes i i have not shown it explicitly but try to work it out yourself now uh s n to the power n equal to e for n even and s n to the power 2 n equal to e for n odd right okay so this is the uh, summary of what we have learned so far so let us now look at uh, some solved examples Uh, to help you understand how do we actually list down all the symmetry elements and corresponding operations in different molecules so let us start with a typical molecule let's say water so we have been seeing water so what are the symmetry elements present so the very first element uh, in every molecule that we have to list is identity it is always there irrespective of the molecule right that as we have learned in addition to e so let's uh, then look at uh, what is the principal axis which is present so principal axis uh, which is present in this case is there is only one axis proper axis of rotation which is c2 axis which is lying in the plane of this board so we can say c2 only one c2 so we will write only one here then there is one plane which is the molecular plane which contains c2 and another plane is uh, the plane which is actually perpendicular to the plane of the board and reflecting the two hydrogens so there are two planes two independent planes so we can call it as sigma v1 and sigma v2 right now how many operations it will generate let us see so e will generate only one operation e then c2 so c2 should generate two operations c2 and c2 square but c2 square is nothing but uh, e so we don't need to consider this one 
so because we are considering only non redundant operations okay so we don't need to consider c2 square although c2 will generate two operations as we have learnt uh, nth order principal axis will generate n operations but we we don't need to consider this because this is equivalent to a now sigma v1 will generate sigma v1 one operation every sigma will generate one operation so we have sigma v1 and sigma v2 so total four symmetry elements and four operations okay so uh, this number is important uh, we will see later four operations that are non redundant okay so this was an easy case so let us go to little higher number of operations let us see uh, let us look at tetrahedral molecule methane okay so now let's see what are the elements and then corresponding operations also we will list down so first and foremost is always e now what is the uh, principal axis of rotation here so how many proper axis of rotations are present so one is c3 axis which is passing through ch bond there are four such axes because there are four ch bonds right and another is uh, c2 axis so c2 axis is bisecting the hch angle we have seen this example before this will be c2 right so uh, let's see we can write down so there are four c3 axis all are equivalent so i'm writing them together if there are non equivalent c3 axis then you will write c3 c3 prime c3 double prime and so on but in this case since all are equivalent c3 axis because all ch bonds are equal so that's why we are writing as uh, 4c3 now how many c2s are present uh, so think about it how many hch bonds are there that are bisected how many of such uh, c2 axis will be there so there will be three such c2 axis so if we list them down by numbers let's say 1 2 3 it will be easier to see that uh, uh, for c2 let's say h1 c h4 then h1 c we have to take only non redundant ones h2 then h1 c h3 right these are the only options uh, which where the c2 will bisect okay the uh, let let's say if you are taking h1 ch4 h2 ch3 will be covered in this right so it is bisecting h1 ch4 as well as h2 ch3 angle right now similarly h1 ch2 so this will be bisecting h3 ch4 angle and h1 ch3 will be bisecting h2 c h4 angle and there are only six angles uh, six such angles in this uh, tetrahedral molecule so we have three c2s over here okay so that's how we list them now what else do we have any ideas so we will have s4 axis so what is an s4 axis s4 is combination of c4 into sigma right sigma which is perpendicular okay so 
can work it out this operation try to work it out this operation yourself otherwise we can discuss during the interaction session how many such c4s will be present if there are three c2s there will be three s4s present okay then uh, we also have sigmas present in this case these will be called as sigma d's because these will be bisecting the h2c angles and how many such sigma d's are present uh, there will be six such sigma d's okay so let's also see where the sigmas are present so let me draw this molecule over here again so if i draw a plane which is containing let me write down one two three four so containing h1 c h2 and reflecting h3 and h4 so this will be one such sigma and we have seen that there are six six such bonds so there will be six such sigmas right that is easier to see now the number of operations so e will generate only one now each c3 will generate c3 c3 square and c3 cube that means three but now this one is equivalent to e so we don't need to consider this one because e is already considered over here so this is not required so that means each of this c3 will generate two operations so then we will have eight such operations eight c3 operations okay now c2 each c2 will generate two operations c2 and c2 square again c2 square will be equal to e so we don't need to consider this one so that means there will be total uh, three c2 operations s4 uh, we have seen that each s4 should generate n operations right because n is e1 over here so s4 should generate s4 s4 square s4 cube and s4 4. Now this will be equal to C4 into sigma. This will be equal to C4 square into sigma square, which is equal to C2. Okay, so this becomes non redundant. This is not because C2 is already covered over here. Then we have C4 cube sigma cube which is c4 cube sigma so again this will be considered and this is equal to e right so that means each s4 will generate two non-redundant operations so that means we will write two s4s and each sigma d will generate one operation so we will have six sigma d's so these are the number of operations it is going to generate so that means total operations will be here sorry 3 into 2 6 right because we have each will generate 2 so we have total 3 s4 axis so this will be 6 so 12 and 12 so 24 operations okay so by now we should be uh, able to identify where the symmetry element is located and how many symmetry operations it will generate and this thing will come out only with practice so you need to practice with a lot large number of molecules otherwise uh, this will never be very clear and uh, further down the line the course will handle this thing as if you know how to calculate this so you should better practice at this point itself uh, how to identify what are the symmetry elements present locate their positions onto the molecule 
and generate operations and identify how many symmetry operations are there. So let us see uh, one more, or maybe a couple of more examples to confirm this. Now let's say uh, the molecules which we have considered already. So BF3. Now again, what are the elements and the corresponding operations? So elements will be E, principal axis will be C3. Where is C3? C3 will be perpendicular to the plane of the board passing through boron atom. Then we have how many C3s are present? Only one. Then we have C2s. Where is the location of C2 now? C2 is located passing in the plane of the board and passing through BF bond, right? This is C2. How many such C2s are present? There are three such BF bonds, so there are three such axes, right? So we have three C2s. What else? Uh, we have a molecular plane, sigma H, then uh, which will contain all four atoms. So this is my molecular plane. Then there will be three planes, each containing the BF bond and perpendicular to the plane of the board. So uh, because it is containing the C2 axis, as well as the C3 axis. So this will be called as Sigma V. Now, how many Sigma V's will be present? There'll be three Sigma V's. Now, what else is present in this case? Now you have noticed that there is a C3 present and a plane which is perpendicular to C3 is present. So that means there must be a S3 axis present. Right now, because there is only one C3, so there is only one S3. Now, let us list down the operations. So, by the way, you should try each and every operation and try to do the operation and see if you are getting an equivalent configuration of the molecule or not. So, that will tell you whether the element is present or not. Okay, so now the operations E, each C3 will generate two operations we have seen that earlier so two c3 operations each c2 will generate only one operation because the c2 square will be equal to e so we will have three c2s then sigma h each will generate one each will generate one s3 s3 square so each s3 will generate two operations so two s3 so now how many total operations we have so we have 6 7 12 so 12 operations let's take one more example let us take cis or trans okay let's do both Trans to butene. Now elements and operations. So elements will be E. What else will be present in this case? We will have a C2 axis. Where will be the C2 axis? C2 axis will be perpendicular to the plane of the board and passing through CC double bond. So if you do this uh, C2 operation, this will go there and this will come here, right? So that will be the kind of rotation anti-clockwise actually, it will be like this. C2 and only one C2 axis, then we have uh, I. In this case, we will have I. So if you see here, 
this is the center of the molecule so if you pass a line from one atom through the center of the molecule you'll find the other atom similarly here right so you will have i then we will have sigma h so this is an easy case number of elements are very less in this and the corresponding operations are e c2 i sigma h so only four operations now let's also look at the case of cis butene now what are the elements and what are the operations so yes e is the first one then what else we have got we will have a c2 axis now where is the c2 axis what is the location c2 will be lying in the plane now unlike this so this is the c2 rotation so ch3 will be moved to this ch3 h will be moved to this h so this is my c2 axis what else have we got we will have two sigma v's sigma v1 so this is the case like water molecule so one uh, will be the molecular plane like this this is sigma v1 and the other one is plane perpendicular to the plane of the board but containing c2 axis right so it will be like this okay so both the planes are perpendicular to each other and each of this will generate only one operation so again four operations here okay so with this uh, let us uh, i'll give you some home exercise so that uh, you are comfortable with uh, identifying all the symmetry elements and operations so let's take benzene let's take a square planar molecule xcf4 and let's take uh, octahedral ab6 let's take a trigonal bipyramidal ab5 let's take a square pyramidal ab5 so i will write it down so square planar octahedral trigonal by pyramidal square pyramidal we have already seen tetrahedral so this will cover a full range so if you can identify the symmetry elements and corresponding symmetry operations locate the position of symmetry elements and find out the number of total symmetry operations you will be good for the rest of the course because these are the type of molecules we will be dealing with very often okay so try to practice uh, this a lot so that uh, this is very very clear in the heads so in the next class we will be uh, dealing with the product of symmetry operations and then we will take up uh, the definitions of uh, symmetry group and all okay so let's end the class today okay thank you